Welcome to the next instalment of the winter vlog. Me and the old pork chop were back at the park lake for 48 hours. We've also got biscuit of the week and we'll be having a little look at these. The two rod and three rod adjustable alley range that's just been launched from Summit Tackle. Roll the intro. Welcome back. If you're new here, this channel's all about my angling adventures, reviews, how-tos, rig tying, lots of carpy stuff. So you may want to think about hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon and you'll never miss another video again. Well, where are we? Well, as I said, we're at the Park Lake. We've got 48 hours. This is probably going to be my last trip because it's starting to get cold now. Water temperature is under 8 degrees now. Still warm enough for a bite though, that's for certain. Got a couple of hours for dark. I've just managed to get the rods out, pinged them out. I've got two straight out and I've got one round to the right of the swim. Now, I've had a little bit of a think and I've been messing about, going around in circles, chasing my own ass with all these rigs, a Ronnie rig and this rig and that rig and trying this and trying that. So I've gone back to basics. I've gone back to what I know works on here and that is the multi rig. Now, I've got two pink pop ups on and a white one. So we're covering the two colours that I know work on here in the winter has worked for me over the years on lots of different venues. It's getting cold now, so those bright sort of pop-ups, those fluoro pop-ups, high flavours, they're going to really work well with that water temperature dropping. But as I said, we've still got a chance of catching one. Now I've pinged two straight out and I've pinged one round to the right round now. Right round where I've seen fish in the winter before, I've caught them in the winter before straight out in a deeper gully. Pull chop easy now. He's hiding away because it's absolutely freezing cold. So he's uh, he'll be out later on at some point. So yeah we've got 48 hours. It's our last trip of the winter then we're gonna go to Sanders and a couple of other different lakes and bits and pieces and that just to try and get a bite really. And I'm desperate to have one from here before we leave because we've been struggling like absolute crazy haven't we? I think we've had about four or five walks of shame so I thought that's it, I'm going to cut the rubbish, go back to basics, multi rig on, fluoro pop ups and give it a go, see what happens. Singles out there, no bait, in the area I know we're on the back of the wind, it's absolutely Baltic up there, that blowing up there it's absolutely freezing cold. When I pushed the barrel around earlier on around here, even though it was on the side of the wind, cough, you could tell the difference. So if you was any self-respecting carp, you'd be on the back of it here, wouldn't you? So that's our best chance of a bite, I reckon. Oh look, he's out. And he's got his new coat on. Well, not new, it's a coat which he's had for a couple of seasons now. But yeah, look, he's out, bless him. Bless his little cottons, eh? And we're a biscuit a week later on. And we're gonna have a look at these. If you're in the market for a decent bit of alley, UK made, engineered, you'd look no further than the old Summit three and two rod adjustable buzz bars. Just been released this week, I believe. And it's Christmas. A couple of days time, it's Christmas. So first of all, I've got to wish you all a happy Christmas. Me and him, the old pork chop, we're gonna wish you a happy Christmas for tomorrow or the day after. Well, I might even be releasing this video on Christmas day. I don't know yet. But that's the plan anyway, I'm not putting bait out, three or singles in areas which I know I've caught from before and the winter's gone past. Rigs that I've caught on before out of here, you know, back to basics, stop all that messing around. And we got 48 hours, so we're going to get that kettle on, get sorted out and come back to you just before it gets dark. Welcome back. We've had a bit of a nightmare. Nightmare with the camera. The card was saying he couldn't read it, so I've had to fiddle about with that. An absolute nightmare we've had. Oh look, look. Here he is, look. Here he is, look, little pork chop up there. He's out. As soon as I start talking on camera, he comes out there, he thinks there's food about. That's what it is, he thinks there's food. But it's looking rather nice out there, getting cold. It's starting to feel absolutely freezing. I wouldn't like to be up that end, that's for certain. That must be absolutely Baltic up there. Really Baltic. So, I just want to explain to you a little bit about where I'm fishing. Now, I told you about the three spots I've got out there. Now, what happens is it goes out about four or five foot for about 50 yards and suddenly it drops down in like a gully by about a foot, two foot. That's where all the natural food and everything collects. 
Ooh, I just had a little bleep on my rod. That's where all the natural food collects, and that's what I found in the winter time. Any of those slightly deeper areas can really produce the goods. Look, look, he's out, look. Look at him. King of the castle, isn't he? King of the bloody castle. So yes, yeah, so I just want to explain to that. If you're struggling to find spots on your lake in the winter to get bites from, and it does, it's an area where they're known to be caught, try and search at them deeper, siltier areas. They're definitely worth a look. On sand dust in the winter, always fish them deeper, siltier areas. You'll find them with a marker or even just casting out of a lead. Just feel for it to drop, clip it up, bring it in, feel for it to drop. If you get that little bit deeper, then you'll find those areas and they're the areas to target. With a single hook bait or you're spotting a bit of gear out, or if you're fishing it regular, get a bit of bait going in those areas because that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna get the bites from in the winter. Even better if it's close to a bit of weed as well. Well that's us. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, another nightmare event. Got a cat along, got it all buzzing, lovely. Looking for me man art travel mug. You know the mug which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago? This bloody keeps your tea hot for six hours. Can't find it. And then I realised I've left the bloody thing on the side. I took it from my last trip, washed it out, and it's on the side. Mrs. Bree's probably sitting indoors now sipping it, my bloody travel mug. So I've had to get my spare mug, but it's just a porcelain, sort of normal mug. So you have to make the tea, because it's so bloody cold, you have to drink it really quickly. So if something happens, or you tie a rig or you're on the phone, it's cold by the time we get back to it. Look at him, look, he's, he, he, what's he doing in there? What's he, look, what is he, what's he doing? God, he's, he's up to no good all the time, he's. The old bloody carp dog, he's up to no good. He's, he's trying to get in the bag. He's got a bag of treats and he's trying to get into it. So he, he, he thinks he should be getting, getting some. That's why. Let's have, a look. Let's have a look what he's doing. I don't know if you'll see, but it's dark. Look at it, look, 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 look. Look at it, look. Look at him, look, try, look at him trying to get in the bag. Look, look at him trying to pull it out. He don't care, does he? Look, 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 he's in there. He's trying to, look, he's over the back. Look at, look at this sod, look. Let's brighten it up for you a little bit. Look at, look, he's in there, look. He's bloody in, let's try and brighten this up a little bit so you can see what the bloody hell he's doing. Look at, look, he's in there. And then he's out. And then he's in. And then he's out. Look. I've brightened it right up now. Oh, oh look, he's got his boat, look. That's what he's trying to find, trying to find that. And then what he'd do is, he'd try and hide it somewhere. He's such a little sod, he is. Let's take that brightness down a bit, because it all messes up. He's a little sod, he is, isn't he? <laughs> he's so funny. Right, so that's it. That's what's happening, that's the plan of attack. Just thought I'd share you why I'm fishing in the, in the areas I'm fishing. Do he's out again. He's trying, he's trying to find his bloody, oh God. He's a bloody nightmare, isn't he? Right, I'm gonna drink my cup of tea if it's not cold. Schoolboy error there, not bringing the mug. Watch the sunset, not like I can see it a lot, because it's a bit cloudy, but it's gonna be about two, three degrees tonight. It could be absolutely freezing, but always got a chance, it only takes one bite, doesn't it? And this is a renowned area for them holding up as soon as it starts to get cold, and it's starting to get cold this week. Catch you in the morning, guys. Hopefully catch you after you through the night with a big whacker as usual, but you never know. We're up against it, I think, but you never know. You've got to keep on keeping on, haven't you? See you in the morning, guys. Just give you a little update. It's uh, ten to nine. Just make a cup of tea. Look, you got pork chop there. Look, look at him. Look, he's all munching his bloody bone and doing whatever he's doing. Make a cup of tea. All quiet. No radio on. Nothing like that. Just peering out. I heard my flop out out there. 
definitely a fish, definitely a carp, weren't a tent or bream, definitely a carp flopped out. So, fingers crossed, I'm hoping that they're still active. I mean, just took, just looked at the water temperature and it's seven degrees, just over seven degrees. So they're still, they're still well warm. Not as warm as it was earlier on, but then it's got dark and it is about two degrees at the moment, or one degree or something. I think tomorrow night it's going to be even bloody cold at minus two or something. Must be absolutely mental, but where that water temperature is still quite high for the time of year, there's still a good chance of getting a bite, I reckon. Especially as the odd one's coming out. Last few weeks the odd one's been coming out here and there. Two or three fish a week, you know, trickling out. I think this might be the end of the feeding spell, hence why I'm going off in the next couple of weeks after Christmas to somewhere else. But yeah, I just thought I'd give you a little update. I'm quite excited, I'm quite, you know, I've heard one. I didn't expect to hear anything or get any bites or anything being this cold. But you never know, do you? You never know, it was definitely a carp. See you in the morning. Good morning. Well, whilst there was no fish last night, I did hear one and I've had a couple of liners. So, still looking good for a bite. He's up and about. He was the old uh, hot water bottle last night. It was minus two, freezing as freezing can be. Must be mad being out here, but hearing one and having a couple of liners this morning, it's still a chance, isn't there? So we're gonna reevaluate whether we're gonna recast or leave them out there later on. But last night, the last night of 2018 on the Park Lake. But I've just made a cuppa, nice cup of Rosie Lee. So that can only mean one thing. Yes, it's time for Biscuit of the Week. Look at that. Well, welcome to the final Biscuit of the Week of 2018. I hope you've enjoyed the little series that we've been doing and you've tried out some of the biscuits, some of the cakes, some of the bits and pieces and put on about two stone like I have. But check out these bad boys for the last one. Milk chocolate, Viennese thins. Now, I've heard of Viennese whirls, but these are Viennese thins. Now, one pound and nine pence from Tesco's. Now, as usual, I've uh, eaten half the packet already before Mm. Let's change my hand over before I've even showed you because I just can't help me bloody self, can I? So I'm a little porker, just like him down there who's porking away. Now look at these, check these out. You've got a bit of a short cakey biscuit -y. They're only small, that's the only thing I don't like about them, they're small. You've got milk chocolate on one side and you've got like a short cakey. Mmm, lovely. In this cold weather, that chocolate goes rock hard. Very nice. I've got to admit, a bit nice, but not as small. We want about two little bites and they're gone. No, oh, look, look. Can't have none of these, bruv. He's got chocolate on him. But look at those. Check those out. Look, lovely. Taste absolutely chocolatey, divine. And just what you want with your first brew of the day. The old milk chocolate Tesco Viennese thins. Now, as you can see on the wrapper, look at that look. They, they are about as fattening as you can get. It's all in the red. Now, once you start seeing the old red, each biscuit contains the old red things, you know, you know you're gonna put about half a stone every biscuit you have. But there's how many in there you get? You get four, eight, you actually get 16 of these little bad boys. 16 of them. Must admit, they are pretty nice, so look at him, look. Look, 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 I think he's getting the box, look. He didn't get nothing as usual. We've got something special for him. But yeah, check out these. Tesco milk, milk chocolate, Viennese things, it says, all butter melt in your mouth, Viennese biscuits, half coated in milk chocolate with a distinctive Piped swell appearance. How about that then? Well, one pound nine pence. Check them out. Tesco milk, milk, Tesco milk chocolate Viennese thins. There you go. Biscuit of the week. Well, welcome back. Sun's right up. It's about midday. 
no, I had no more liners, not seen anything at all. Although I had finished off the old packet of biscuit of the week. Those Viennese chocolates, oh bloody hell. A bit special they were. Look at that sun, how bright it is. Mega bright up there. Which should get the fish moving about, hopefully. You never know. I'm gonna leave them out there, I'm not gonna touch them. Now, they all went down perfect. I'm happy with them, so why move them? Especially when not a lot's happening. You know, it could be you move me in, you thrash the water to a foam, and the fish would just settle down and were looking for a bit of grub, they spook away because they're very spooky in here, but there's no weed in here. Nothing to keep them in certain areas or, or when you're casting out to muffle the sound of those leads and really those leads in through the water on the top. So we're gonna leave it as it is, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at, as promised, the Summit Premium Alley two rod and three rod adjustables that they've just added to the range. Something I've used for the last two or three months before they were released and uh, yeah we'll have a look at those so right let's head on over. Summit Tech are renowned for making UK made high quality engineered bankware. Earlier on in the year Summit released the Alley Premier range, the three rod fixed, the two rod mini, the three rod mini. Now they've just released to add to the Premier Alley range the two and three rod adjustable buzz bars. So I thought I'd just take a few minutes to explain to you what I like about them. There's a couple of design features in the Premier Alley range that I think makes it stand out. Talking to the engineers about how they come about with the Premier Alley range, it was evident that they really put a lot of thought and time and effort into producing something which I think is premium. It really is the best Alley range you can get out there. For instance, the alley that they use is at the highest quality possible. It's 16 millimeter diameter. It's two mil wall thickness. So it's not gonna bend, it's not gonna dent. You're not when you kick it over by accident, as we all do, it's gonna bend out of shape and it's just, it's just quality. You know, two mil wall thickness is a thick, high quality aluminium. Also, the anodization process, the enhanced anodization. Now, I know speaking to the engineers there, they sent the alley off to get anodized at various different companies, about four or five different companies, to try and get the best finish possible. They call it enhanced anodization because it's a lot thicker, so it doesn't scratch as much. So it's a lot harder wearing and will last you a lifetime. You know, all anodization, it will scratch, but it doesn't scratch as easily. Another nice design feature, which is attention to detail, is on the bar, the inner bar of the adjustables, you've got a flat side. Exactly the same as you get in their bank sticks, got a flat side so when you tighten it up with the easy tight key or you tighten up the ergonomic screw at the desired adjustment it's never going to move it's never going to twist it's never going to rattle around it stays there simple as that another nice feature is they've incorporated into the two and the three adjustables just like they do on their coliseum range as well is the locking nut now you know what it's like you put your buzzers on and you tighten them up and they they're facing the wrong way you know as many a time i've broken a hockey stick well, I've just pushed it just that too much to try and get it all lined up and straight to get your buzzers all in a line. With the lock-up feature, you adjust it to, to be in line and then you, you tighten up the locking nut to the buzzer and it keeps it there. There's no more twisting the buzzer and trying to get it around and breaking things. Really nice little design feature which just makes it easy to line up your buzzer without the hassle of breaking stuff. Now, the new adjustable buzz bars, they come in two rod and three rod adjustable. The two rod adjustables are five inches at the back. They adjust to seven inches. The front two rod buzz bar is six inches and adjusts to nine inches. The three rod adjustables are nine inches at the back and they adjust to 15 inches. And they're 10 inches at the front and adjust to 16 inches. Each buzz bar also comes with a locking nut. You tighten that up to your bank stick. That prevents any twist, keeps it nice and solid and keeps the buzz bars pointing in the direction that you want them to. Another nice little design feature is the ergonomic screw. It's got a little summit M on it. And no matter how you tighten it up with your easy tight key or your fingers, that M always aligns perfectly in the same place every time. So it really is attention to detail. Just like with all summit bankware, it's gonna last you a lifetime. You're only gonna buy it once. So if you're in the market for a quality UK made two rod and three rod adjustable buzz bars, check out the new additions to the Premier Alley range, the two and three rod buzz bars now. Well, welcome back. Not a lot's happened. We're just having a brew. He's out. Look, he's out and about. Look at him. Here he comes. Yeah, he loves it. He does, doesn't he, eh? He loves it. He's having a little scruffly scruttle around, doesn't he? 
Well, I thought we'd bet half an hour before dark. I thought we'd just having a brew. Hope you like that little review, that little insight on the um, on the Premier Premier Alley three rod and two rod adjustable buzz bars. Been using that three rod one for the last couple of months. Should be released now. I'll put the link down in the description if you want to go and have a further look at it. But yeah, I mean, you know, any, anything with Summit is quality. UK made and it's going to last your lifetime. And it doesn't scratch very much because it's, you know, about tr treble the amount of anodization of normal. Won't bend because it's two mil wall thickness. Uh, it's just a nice bit of kit. Yeah, check it out. I'll put the link down in the description. But what's happening here? Well, we've got that last bit of sun going down behind us. It's looking lovely out there. Really is looking spot on, but. I haven't seen anything today. I thought I might have seen one. Poke his head out somewhere. But I haven't seen anything. Then again, I've been busy doing that little bit of filming. And, um, oh, look, look. Paul Chop's out and about. Bless him. He's scrattling around. But yeah, I mean, it's, uh, what's he doing? What's he, look? What's he doing? He's having a mad five minutes, isn't he? Oi, get out of there. He's having a little scrattle around. Oh, he's something else he is, isn't he? As soon as I start talking, he, he starts having a mental one. Right, let's have a look at it out there. What's it looking like? Looking beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Flat calm, still blowing a bit windy up the other end. But, no fish. But we've got to keep on keeping on, and it really does only take one bite. So we're gonna crack on, get me dinner ready for tonight. It's only about half an hour before it gets dark, so I've decided to leave the rods where they were, not recast it. I've got enough supplies, enough water, I don't need to reel them in. So we're going to leave them there. I've decided to leave them there, rather than have a recast or a move. Especially after seeing that one last night and having a couple of liners. You never, never know. Right, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sort, look. I'm going to sort with Buddy. What's, what's he doing? What are you doing? God knows what he's doing. Look, he, he's just scrutting around. What's he seeing? A rat or something, do you think? God, he's something, something. Yeah, right, is he? Then again, they do say dogs are like their owners, don't they? I ain't bloody right, I know that. Can't be right out in this, minus two. Must be mad, but you never know, you never know. Still got a chance. Look, look. what's he doing? He's like, a, he's like a crazed animal at the moment. Don't know what he's doing, running around like crazy thing, digging up everything. Right, I'm gonna get sorted. I'm gonna finish my brew, settle in for the night, and you never know, fingers crossed, let's see if we can catch one before the end of the year. This is the last vlog of 2018. Yeah, you never know, you never know. The carp gods might be smiling down on us. See you soon, guys. Well, would you believe it? After all them blanks, we finally managed to catch one. 37 pound seven mirror. I've never been so happy to see a fish, land a fish, get a bite in all my life. Oh, blimey, it could have been 17 pound seven and I wouldn't have cared, but we've had one. Just goes to show you, doesn't it? Just gotta keep on keeping on. Let's get her up to show you. Oh, Whew. What an awesome mirror. And one which is very, very, very welcome. Unbelievably welcome. Look at that. What a lovely cracking mirror. Whew. Makes all in blanks worthwhile. Whew. Just shows you, you gotta keep on keeping on. Whew. Look at that. Result. Whew. Well, I'm gonna get her back, I think. One last look. You stay still for us. Oh, look at that. Cool, happy days. This one, catch another one. See you in a minute, guys. We only went and caught one, didn't we? Ah, madness, eh? Well, how about that? All that perseverance, all that blanking and we managed to slip one underneath the net last night when I least expected it. Oh, freezing at minus two last night. What can you say? What can you say? Well, 
that's me done for 2018. From me and Pork Chop, have a happy Christmas from me and him, from mine to yours, and see you for the next vlog, 2019. Have a great Christmas, guys.